Hi everyone, I'm Eric and I'm joined with, by Doug, who's helping us out to kickstart the Static Site Editor group. Um, this is kind of, kind of the end of the first week where the Static Site Editor team has had an engineer to help. And one of the first things we did was task Doug with understanding if the handbook could be edited with an open source Static Site Editor, such as Netlify CMS. So Doug, do you wanna share your screen and take, away, uh, take it away and tell us what you learned? This week. Sure, sure. Let's. Uh, I'll share my screen here. And okay, so here we are. I have installed Netlify CMS into our static um, site. Mid, um, the uh, for the about site, um, and that's running with middleman. And so I've done a minimal configuration here. I forked the repo. Um, and I am having it commit, make changes to my forked uh, version of the site. I'm also running this locally, as you can see. Um, this is due to some of the issues I had trying to integrate with Netlify's um, online service, uh, where the build was uh, taking too long and it just, their service just timed out. Um, so I defaulted to running it locally. I'm having it authenticate against our, um, uh, my applications underneath my GitLab uh, account, basically. Um, so what we do is we can come here and we'll look at the site running right now. And you can see there's our traditional website and the way Netlify CMS works is you go to the admin part of the site. And it flashed really quickly there because I've already logged in, but it authenticated against uh, GitLab with some settings I had uh, uh, set that I mentioned. Um, as you enter here, this is the place where you come and uh, edit the site. Uh, so the blog area was very easy to set up because it's a flattened structure. Um, as you can see, I created actually a new one a few minutes ago. Um, I had to customize to get these uh, fields um, set up in the way that we have the fields set up on all of our blogs. Um, as you can see there, you can edit in rich text or in Markdown. And that's really the, I think, Eric, what you were trying to get from a product like this, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we have a rich text to mark down. And as you can see, when you switch to rich text, you have all these uh, WYSIWYG type of controls available to you. Um, when I switch back, of course it doesn't. So I created this uh, with my uh, in rich text a, a little while ago. You can insert images. As you can see, I inserted an image here um, and it will pop up here. You can choose your image. Um, I just downloaded a random one that I found on our site. Um, put it on my desktop and I uploaded it. And so you can just do upload like this and you can see it goes to your file browser and, um, and then you can just choose it or delete it. And then uh, once you have it in the site, you can see it just, um, it actually rendered before. I think I tried that. Um, so with all new things, of course, when you have a demo, it does not work, right? <laughs> um, so I will just insert it live here. I think it blanked it out is what happened um, when I didn't choose selected type of a thing. Um, well, anyway, let's just say it works. <laughs> uh, where, where does it, okay, so it's defaulting to like a path where it uploads that image. There you go, like that. I just unsaved my my uh, my changes. I came back into the document, and it uploads it to uh, images uploads path. Um, Where did it get that default from? It got that default from our settings. And so let's see if I can go back into my file browser here. So this is the repo that I'm making these changes against. And okay. so let's go into the source, and this is where the setup for the site happens. Uh, for the Netlify CMS part. Gotcha. And in, inside of here, you can see um, there's that public images. Um, and then I could, the reason it, uh, 
you can see it comes up as uh, let's go let's try something else out here you can put images in this area as well um, and if I were to go to something that I was playing around with the handbook right here so if I go into the handbook area right and uh, our hand our handbook uh, directory structure is um, folder index.html uh, markdown file right another folder an index file and so that's what this this is representing right here and as you can see here I have an image right in the um, in that uh, you can put a Twitter image and things like that in that and that's configurable by um, right here you can see they're called widgets for your fields and these fields make up the um, uh, what I'll call like the, the, the form uh, fields at the top, basically. And widget types are either strings, you can do lists, you can do maps, um, and you can do images and different things like that. And so you can actually insert images there. So I did not edit um, this one at all. I just said the label is of type image. And when this thing came up to edit it, it knew what to put there and, and how to represent it in the, in the UI. Right. Okay. So when I came here, it knew that, oh, it's an image and I'll display it basically. Okay, and great. Put these, put these little helpers. Um, okay. So if you go, if you can go back maybe to, yeah, to the, to this, uh, oh, interesting. Four, yeah. Four. It, it, it just been doing that a little bit here, here and there um, on, on a few things. It does it more in this area because uh, this is, <laughs> Uh, so to create, so this thing works, uh, this Netfly CMS, I think, um, really shines in the blog area because it's a flattened structure on the directory. And so it's expecting to find, uh, on the left-hand side here is, is like, you know, a, a, a menu or file browser, however you want to look at it. Uh -huh. Um, it's looking to either do a, rep, that's supposed to represent a file or it's supposed to represent a directory that has a, a bunch of files in it. Uh, okay. basically um, so in the blog post uh, so in the post directory which is represented um, right here that's our source post directory right that has a lot of files in it one for each um, blog post right so it really shows up really well here you can click into any of them and blow up so uh, what I found was a lot of our blog posts are written as um, with an ERB extension. Uh -huh. um, so they're being processed by Ruby as well. And Netlify can't handle that. So that's what that was right there. I so if you, if you click into this one, this one's not. This one's just a markdown file. But if you were to look at our file structure uh, and at all of our blog posts, a lot, the majority of them that I saw are ERB files. Doesn't mean they have to, they have to all be. Um, but if you're trying to do things, uh, Ruby type things in there, you need to uh, throw on the ERB extension. So it'll be processed by that too. I see. So it, is it safe to say then that anything that's got a .ERB extension really would not play well with this type of uh, uh, editing experience at this point in time? Right. It doesn't look like it can handle the, the ERB extensions. Um, okay. It can handle the, the Markdown extension, the YAML extensions, and a few others. Okay, so maybe you could walk through like, um, I guess I'm partial to like the product handbook, which would be slash handbook slash product. Um, okay. How would I get there? So uh, that's one of the problems of, of, uh, that I want to cover of, of this. So you can see I have these three mentioned here. Um, and what I found was to have them show up on this left-hand side, uh, it will not, uh, cascade down and look at all your directories and, and handle that uh, nesting like a tree structure. It will not do that. Um, to do this, you have to, you can see I manually put these in here in the config file. Mm -hmm. So this, this corresponds to source slash handbook, which has that one index HTML markdown file in it. And then underneath uh, source handbook, there's an about directory. And then there's one HTML um, file underneath there, a markdown file. Um, same for the next um, directory down. Uh, so my opinion is to 
properly be able to handle this, you need to either have some kind of way to dynamically um, generate this file or don't use it <laughs> um, because this, this doesn't, you know, this doesn't scale. You know, I copied and pasted and put these in here and that's how I got these things to show up basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, so at that point, what I did was once I noticed that I'm like, well, you know, um, I was talking to, to you and we, and you, you gave me your workflow and I thought that was, that was great. So then I realized I just need to hijack that edit button basically at the bottom of the thing. And maybe I can get that to point to go to here instead, basically. Yeah. And um, that's a no go. It seems okay. because as you see, I'm like, Oh, I'll just put that, you know, URL in here. But the problem is it's, it's predicated on that collections and the collections are then are defined <laughs> right here. Right. So unless it appears here, it will not, you can't even hit the path, basically. It doesn't even have a path to it um, for the editor. I see. Okay, so if we had a way to um, kind of dynamically generate that list and put it in that uh, admin or collections file there, then mm -hmm. all of these things would show up in the left-hand side on the collections. Yes, they would show okay. up on the left-hand side. It would, you know, it, it, there's no nesting and there's no tree structure. So it's not the real interface you'd want to look at, but yeah. at least maybe at that point you could hit it with the um, edit link from the actual page on the site. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. And I think most handbook page edits do happen like that. That is probably the most common workflow uh, versus like adding a new page completely. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. And I think for the for this new blog area, I think it this would be probably the one of the areas where you might just use this to come at your entry point instead. Right. So um, once you got that blog collection, all of these pages, it did pull that in automatically though, right? Because it's in yep. a single one folder has all of these files that are blog posts. Yep. Yes, it did. And so okay. let's see if we can just take a quick peek there. And, and see what that looks like um, it's underneath them. Um, posts. And you can see that's, that's these right here. Okay, so that's cool. Underneath there, yeah. Yep, so that makes, that makes sense. Okay, so. Um, and it does a lazy loading, which is nice. You know, it, it'll keep querying, querying. Okay, great. Uh, no searching there though, so it'd be tough to find. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and so like, mate, you can't even do like a control F because if it's not loaded, that's not going to help you. Yeah, um, exactly. On the page. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so maybe walk me through like the editing experience, and then what happens if I wanted to make a change? Like, how about let's just scope a change to maybe one of these blogs or like one of the handbook about pages that you've got over there, and um, sure. change a few words, and then walk me through what happens once once we have that published flow? Sure, so I uh, went into our last release. For some reason, our last release was not an ERB. Uh, it didn't have an ERB extension on it, so we can edit it here. Um, okay. I, I was playing, you can um, change things like uh, author, so uh, um, Bob. And um, I noticed another thing here, like category. So this is where like this, this will also help us um, if we were to use this is, I see, the fields like on the blog posts are like categories and this one says releases. I'm sure there's a finite list that we're using there. And so you could leverage, uh, right now I'm calling this widget, which is what this is referred to, uh, a string, but you could call it list and provide a list. And that way we'll keep ourselves, we could keep ourselves out of, you know, the things that lists are used for, you know, keep the users out of fat fingering things, you know, keep to a, a certain thing. So, right. Um, that's one neat thing. Um, uh, so 12.4.2.3.2. So I can just keep editing there, uh, you know, switch it back and forth. You get the fast preview on the right. Now, cool. the one, th one thing is here, um, you cannot exit this page um, without publishing. If you exit the page without publishing, you lose your changes. Okay, so there's no, no draft mode kind of a thing. Right. And it seems like, um, so we can go into 
that the um, beta features that they have coming or already have in, uh, soon you know, later. But um, so it just what it just did there. I hit publish, right? What it does there, it goes to my Git repo, uh, which is the fork of the of our site, uh, our about site, and it um, uh, commits the change basically, but directly to it, directly to master. Um, so if I go to commits on the repo, and you can see um, just now, and you can see the changes. Okay, cool. Is that, um, I'm assuming your local deployment, oh no, this was run locally. No, that's on .com, of course. So. Yeah, so I forked our, our, our www um, site and uh, did it, you know, set it up to do commits against there. Okay, and then the, if you went to that site live then, um, would you see your changes already? Yes, let me find, here it is. And let's try to find, well, the problem, no, is the answer to that because I'm running the site on my local host, the changes were committed upstream. Yep, and, and haven't so, redeployed it. And I have not redeployed it, so um, it would have to be, um, I would have to fetch it down here, basically. Yep, and then that's okay. Start. No worries, that makes, that makes sense. Cool, thanks for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, so we determined that you can do all these things. It's, it's, it's great. What I feel like is, is um, I'll go into like what I think is lacking with this publish. So this publish, um, ideally, we would like it to operate like our web IDE does, basically, right? Um, it should uh, take a bunch of commits, allow you to um, do a lot of things at once, and then open a merge request and, uh, and create a branch. Create a branch and open a merge request, basically. Um, it does not do that right now. It creates uh, the commit right away against your master branch. They do have a, uh, what they, they're calling a beta feature, uh, only with GitHub integration right now, where they will open a pull request, allow you to do have a draft type of a function, do a bunch of commits against one uh, pull request, and basically the flow we're looking for, but with uh, the you know <laughs> the other people. Um, so that doesn't really help, um, right? But it, at least it it looks like it's going that direction. Um, there. So they do have a contribution um, concept. So you, it is plausible that if we wanted to get the flow that we wanted by staying in their tool, we could contribute to their uh, Net, Netlify C, uh, CMS. And you can see this is their GitLab API. We would probably have to um, enhance it. Like this is the uh, GitHub one. And you can see they're doing pull requests in here and things. And probably need to add in the comparable hits to our API and you know uh, contribute to it and get that added in. That that would be the one one of the ways to get it to work for us if we wanted to. Um, cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I really liked its blog. This in the blog area, um, as far as like the WYSIWYG uh part of it or getting out of markdown if you want to get out mm -hmm. of markdown type of a thing um uh, to me the it's a it's a deal breaker when it doesn't handle the committing correctly and, and you know um forces me to create a fork to to follow that concept type of a thing right now um yeah so, okay yeah uh, so i really like the idea of uh, so I, I went and spent some time uh, looking at uh, our web IDE um, and, I, and, and how our edit, this page, hooks into that. And uh, I really liked how that does everything we want, except it doesn't have that rich text in the, in the um, rich text uh, editor that you're looking for, basically. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I would say the, the really, really hard part of this is probably the Git interactions and things like that and get the, the merge request created and everything like that. Um, I don't want to trivialize how adding in a rich text editor or anything like that, but it kind of feels like to me like the web IDE is like the house is already built. We just need to like, you know, paint the walls basically. Mm. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing too, though, would be um, the web IDE does not have any sort of side by side processing. It does have a preview tab, but mm -hmm. you'd have to basically hit that tab every single time you wanted to kind of get a new preview of what you've written. Yeah, I know what you mean. So this, so basically this is my Ruby mind. So you basically, you know, want this type of experience, basically just like the, the other um, experience, which is my, my yeah. mark down here and then my preview over here type of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then again, that's, that's, uh, it is there. Uh, it just needs to be more real time and side by side, basically, right? Um, so it seems like it just seems like that would be a great place to put it. I found some mention of it in some issues uh, on the Web IDE issues uh, tracker, um, where it was it was just mentioned, but it wasn't really committed to or anything like that. Cool. Well, this has been uh, this has been really helpful. I'm going to uh, stop the recording now. Anything else you want to say before we do that? Um, let's see. Nope, that's about it. Okay, cool. Well, thanks so much, Doug, and appreciate your spike into that this week. Sure. <laughs>